I'll tell you what, it's one of those things that, you know, when we made the transition to UC Davis, I was thrilled. It was an opportunity to coach Division I football. I was going to get back to my roots and coach the defensive line. And as much fun as that's been, uh, ever since that transition, I've been hungry to get back into a situation where, you know, I get to call a defense. You know, I, I get to sit in a room and collaborate with guys and put together a plan that we feel is really good in terms of attacking uh, the opponent that we're seeing. Last two years, I've uh, been at University of Northern Iowa. Was a great transition for our family to get back to the Midwest. And last season, I took over special teams in July. And just to kind of share that experience with you guys, I'll be honest with you. When I took that over, not only was I hesitant, I was borderline scared. You know, Co Coach Farley goes, hey, uh, how comfortable are you with special teams? I go, Coach, I ran the punt team last year, but I, I, beyond that, I don't know a damn thing about special teams. And the thing that I learned through that experience is, you know, not, not, not only is it, was it great for me and probably one of the best opportunities I've had as a coach to get out of my comfort zone, but there's something really special about working with special teams because you get to work with the entire football team. And uh, coach every guy on the roster, it was something that I really enjoyed and learned a ton from. And... Five weeks ago, headed up to Fargo. Very excited for the opportunity. And uh, you know, we got a heck of a challenge ahead of us. They played some really good defense up there for a long, long time. And the challenge ahead of us is to find a way to continue to evolve so that we can stay ahead of the curve and continue to play really good defense. This is something I've spoken on before. Had a lot of film from my time at Winona State, UC Davis and at UNI in that transition. Um, I was able to pull some clips from North Dakota State just to give you examples of what I'm talking about in terms of the way I've structured run fits. And more importantly today, what I wanna dive into with you guys isn't necessarily exactly how we do it at North Dakota State. To me, when I've sat in these rooms before, if I'm a 3-4 guy and I go listen to a 4-3 speaker, to me, I don't know how much I've been able to pull from that. But but sitting in a defensive coordinator's seat, trying to structure a defense, trying to find ways to best uh, defend modern football, you know, what I do want to talk about today is how I've structured run fits. I've coached in a 3-3 stack. I've coordinated in a 3-4. I've coordinated in a 4-3. You know, at the end of the day, we know as great coaches, you find ways to structure your system to best fit your personnel. And, and what I want to kind of dive into today is just, you know, how I've gone through that process and what I view as effective, good football in terms of the way that we've structured those run fits and making sure it's still sound versus all, all the RPO stuff that we see. Some things that I want to touch on. To me, playing great run defense and run fits doesn't happen by chance. There's, there's common factors that show up in that. And, and that's something I want to dive into. Um, building an identity as a defense, how to structure those run fits. Within those run fits, you know, even, shoot, 10 years ago, when I just started coaching, it was a different world. Are we sound in the fit? Are we sound in the fit? Are we sound in the fit? Yeah, we're sound in the fit. Well, shoot, you, you start seeing modern football, you're sound in the fit, but you're exposing yourself in the RPO game. I mean, our mentality as defensive coaches has changed. It has to change. And, and, you know, kind of how we view that and how we need to structure that. How can we attack the run game? And then if we have time at the end, I do want to dive into, you know, how we've kind of structured our blitz packages to manipulate protection and then get after that quarterback. Okay. The way I'll always structure run fits with linebackers, safeties, and just coaching in our room as a defensive staff. Any call in the playbook, any call, we better be able to identify, is this a gap fit? Okay, is this a layered fit where we're playing flow fallback? Or is this a funneled fit? At the end of the day, as a linebacker, all these calls going on, this is called, man, this is a gap fit, this is a fast fit, I'm gonna play downhill. Layered fit, flow fallback, man, I'm gonna pull Double teams off my O-line, or excuse me, my D-line, and I'm going to have the ability to fall back. I'm going to be a natural, instinctual football player. Excuse me. And then lastly, funnel fit. Man, we're bringing pressure or we're running a game 
we are doing something with our D-line to force the ball somewhere. And as a linebacker, I should understand that, right? If they're all slanting to the left, where's the ball most likely going to go? It's either going to find outside right now and try to outrun it, or it's going to fall back to my right side. And i got to understand that. Any call that we have in our defense, our linebackers should know what category that falls into. 